All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here, Teenage Cognitive and Moral Development, as we continue looking at lifespan development. So our objectives are to analyze problems uh, teenagers face with cognitive skills and explain moral development in teenagers. And if you would, please take a look at the standards there as well. And our desired result here, how do teenagers develop cognitively and morally? So the development of cognition. So patterns of thinking also change as teenagers develop. Uh, if you remember back to Jean Piaget, um, one of the periods that he refers to is the formal operations period. And this has a lot to do with the teenager uh, adolescence time period. So 11 and 12 year olds begin to think uh, more abstractly. I should say begin um, and think not, you know, I'll try and change this for you. <laughs> so it should say begin. So I guess I'm just trying to fix this for you. Begin to think. There we go. More abstractly. Starting when you're 11 or 12 year old is when you begin to uh, think more abstractly. Uh, the, pro the problem say that solving capabilities expand uh, during the teenage years as well, and teenagers are able to develop reasons to problems and try solutions. So if your car is making a weird noise, you know, you might, you know, pop the hood and say, hmm, what's making that noise? You, you know, you may pull over somewhere and try and figure out, you know, why, why that noise is happening. So teenagers uh, begin to try to understand reasons why things are happening and then try their own solutions at it. So comprehension. So teenagers are not only able to solve abstract problems in science and math, which are the typical areas where abstract thinking comes into play. Uh, it can also relate to metaphors and analogies, um, understanding those. And they begin to understand ethics like right and wrong, uh, phoniness when someone may be, you know, acting phony with them, and also conformity, understanding, um, you know, why people fit in society and the importance of maybe sometimes fitting in society. Um, introspection also begins uh, to expand during the teenage years. So why am I feeling and acting the way that I am? Now, teenagers also begin to deal with overpowering emotional feelings. Uh, for example, a student who failed a test may believe that the reason they failed the test was because maybe they were worried about a date they were going on with someone later that weekend or that night, um, or you know maybe they were concentrating on the big football game or you know soccer game. Um, so students begin to try to overanalyze situations and say, well, the reason I failed the test was because I was thinking about you know um, you know I got to get to my my job after school and you know my boss is going to be mad at me if I'm late again. Um, you know, and I really need the money to save up to buy a car or whatever. So students begin to, or teenagers, I should say, uh, begin to, uh, this is called rationalization. We're rationalizing why we're fearing the way we, why we feel the way we do, why we failed that test, why we had that car accident, um, whatever the case may be. Hopefully you don't have a car accident, but um, certain things like that. And again, just like what children, when we talked about infants and children developing, not all teenagers will reach uh, new cognitive skills at the same time. Um, and these skills can also differ from social and cultural backgrounds. So, you know, uh, if you come from a wealthier family, maybe someone comes from a little bit of a poorer family, you know, the way you develop cognitively may, different, may be different from somebody who lives, you know, two hours away from you. So changes in thinking patterns can also lead to uh, changes in personality and social interactions. Uh, for example, um, teenagers can become very idealistic and hypothetical. So they um, see the world in grand schemes and I can solve this or do that. Um, they, they have a very hypothetical view of the world. Um, some begin to even view the world as a sorry place, so to speak, and they can rebel against it. So they might say, man, this world stinks, you know, all these problems in the world, all these wars and destruction, um, you know, all these diseases and, you know, poor people, um, you know, sometimes they can rebel against that. Uh, they, they may want to try to change it. They may want to try to rebel against society. They blame society uh, for some of the issues that are going on. They may rebel uh, against society because of it. Others may develop a what is known as messiah complex, where they believe that they can save the world. Um, you know that you know, oh my gosh, you know, look at all these you know 
uh, you know, children in, you know, foreign countries or third world countries that are suffering, um, I can fix that. I know what I can do. I can save the world. And that's great. And that's wonderful. But again, sometimes teenagers uh, don't really think ahead too far before they make those assumptions. They can also become frustrated with older adult generations. They may blame older adults or older adult generations, such as their parents or grandparents or teachers. Um, for the problems of the world saying, you know, how come you didn't fix this? How come you didn't uh, help these people, you know, and things like that. So they can become frustrated with people who are older than them and say, well, it's your fault. We don't, you know, we have poor people in the world. It's your fault. You know, we have, you know, chemical weapons or nuclear weapons. It's, you know, it's not my fault. It's not my generation's fault. It's everyone else's fault who came before me. And they can also be uh, very unrealistic about the complex nature of life, for example, um, certain uh, job positions, like they don't understand why a person would give up the job they're, you know, when they're making a lot of money uh, just because they don't like the job. They don't understand, teenagers typically don't understand it. Why would you give up a job you're unhappy at when you're making, you know, so much money? They don't understand those complex natures of life of why we, why adults feel certain ways. Now the problems teenagers develop as a result of immaturity and kind of going through this abstract thought process were described by Dr. David Elkind in 1984. Um, some of the things that uh, he identified were adolescents realized that uh, the people that they admired for years have fallen short of their ideals and let others know it. So for again, example, you know, you admire your mom and your dad or your grandparents or siblings, whoever, somebody you look up to when you're a child, your teachers, many kids look up to their teachers. But again, as they become teenagers and adolescents, they begin to realize that maybe their parents and their teachers or other adults in their life, um, you know, again, going back to the whole concept or idea of, you know, you failed the world, you know, why didn't you stop this? Why didn't we stop, you know, these nuclear weapons? Why didn't you stop the spread of this disease? So they, they begin to, again, blame older generations for the problems of today. <clears throat> Uh, they also become very argumentative. Uh, teenagers, um, and maybe some of you know friends or other family members, but teenagers are very argumentative and they will argue any viewpoint um, for any problem that presents itself. I know my cousin, when she was a teenager um, and even still growing up still, she is she can become very argumentative about certain uh, hot topic political issues. Um, when, when our family gets together and um, she is very argumentative sometimes. She's not mean or violent, but um, she can become very argumentative and that's part of her, you know, cognitive process of growing up as she, you know, is still an older, well, she's a, in her late, early 20s now, but again, still that whole time period. Adolescents also have problems with decision decision making, even with limited choices. I can remember as a teenager, you know, talking to my friends, hey guys, what do we want to do tonight? Do we want to go to the movies or do we want to go to the bowling alley? You want to go grab a bite to eat at a restaurant? And those were just three simple choices, but you know, it was like I'd be talking to three or four friends and nobody could make up their mind. It wasn't like I was saying, hey, let's go spend a million dollars. What do we go spend it on? It was, you know, hey, do we want to go to the movies or do we want to go to the bowling alley? And sometimes even just two choices was just uh, a difficult decision and took a long time for us as teenagers to decide what we were going to do on a Friday or Saturday night. Um, they also struggle with living up to an ideal and they sometimes misunderstand it. So again, you know, that whole messiah complex of I'm going to save the world, I'm going to stop cancer. That's great, but a lot of times teenagers, they don't really realize the full complexity behind it and they sometimes misunderstand the ideal that they're trying to um, support. <clears throat> adolescents assume that everyone is thinking the same thing they are. Um, I'm sure you may have seen this again too with friends, you know, that, you know, you get into arguments with your friends about, you know, different friends or different, you know, events or things like that, and, you know, even politics sometimes, you know, they, adolescents very much have a one-way thinking sometimes and think that everyone is thinking the same thing they are. And adolescents also feel that they are special and that their situation is unique. Um, which is why teenagers take risky behaviors and self-destructive behaviors sometimes. Um, you know, this is why, you know, sometimes teenagers 
um, go to parties or whatever, and, you know, not saying that you should, but, you know, you probably hear in the news of teenagers doing things that are illegal and drugs and alcohol and things like that, but, you know, teenagers sometimes think that they are invincible. Um, you know, that's not going to happen to me. Yeah, that happened to that kid in the next school district, but that's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to make the same mistakes that that kid did. Well, and then unfortunately, the next weekend, that teenager is dead. Um, so again, a lot of times teenagers, you know, don't think that they, you know, anything bad can happen to them um, with these risky behaviors that they take sometimes. So development of moral thinking. So adolescents and young adult horde are the most profound periods of moral thinking development. Um, one of the things that they do is, remember we talked about Kohlberg uh, about a week or so ago with moral thinking and <coughs> moral development. And teenagers and adolescents begin to question if laws are just or unjust. Um, abstract moral thinking also requires understanding another person's point of view, so you understand where another person is coming from. And not all adolescents uh, display a higher level of this thinking. It, again, just like with everything else, when we talk about development, not everybody develops at the same time or will develop these skills. Um, and one thing that psychologists typically agree on is that most moral development depends on certain factors, such as your relationship with your parents or a significant other. So understanding how your parents are feeling, understanding how your significant other is feeling, um, that allows for a higher development of moral thinking. And moral development uh, does not progress as much in high school as it does in college when you're, you know, maybe living on your own and you have to make these important moral decisions, you know, is this right? Should I do this? Do I, you know, do I do this or that, you know, um, and taking care of yourself when you're in college and when you live away. I know when I moved away to college and I lived away from home, it definitely uh, made me mature a lot more about taking care of myself and being responsible for myself, doing my laundry. And many of you may do this on your own already. Um, but again, when you, when most teenagers move away or go to school or college, um, you begin to develop more of those moral uh, skills about what is right and what is wrong. And what do I need to do to improve myself? Okay, so wrapping up. Um, so try to think about how teenagers develop cognitively, how does their thinking change, um, what causes their thinking to change, and then think about some of the moral issues that they're facing as well, and how do they develop morally um, and make important decisions as well. All right, remember to include uh, this information in your weekly summary chart. Hope you have a great week and talk to you soon.